it going to catch the claw. Yeah. Just a minute, just a minute. Got it? Well, here we are up on the roof, and you can see I've got the peak plywood cut. And I have put my drip edge on. Of course, you start at the bottom and work your way up. Uh, all you need to know about doing roofing, at least one of the contractors I work for told me, water runs downhill, payday's on Friday. That's all you need to do to be a roofer. Well, it's not quite that simple. But we have the drip edge all on on the back side. And we're going to get the back side shingled. I'll take you down. And I'll show you how to cut your starter strips. Okay, so before we actually start doing our shingling, and uh, disclaimer here, this is how I do it. Not necessarily the only way, but the way I have learned to do it, and I have done it for many years. Uh, I expect this will be my last roofing job. As you can see, I'm using architectural shingles which is what they call them the other style uh, they used to have jet shingles which essentially was like this all one piece no cutouts at all uh, they didn't last very long part of the problem was there was not allowance for uh, shrinkage and expansion and when they expanded they tended to buckle a lot the idea was good because the other style that is common is called a three tab, which a lot of you have seen, I'm sure, and I have three tab on my house actually. And you have a slot here and another slot down here. And what happens is after a while, where those slots are, the water runs in there and it wears out the, the shingles, it uh, disturbs the uh, granular coating on them. And uh, so you end up, the rest of the shingle may not be too bad, but because it wears out in the slot, you end up having to replace your shingles. These, I think, are guaranteed for 25 years. They do make three tabs that are guaranteed for 20 or 25 years, but this is what we're using. Now, first things first. You see this uh, glue strip here, tar strip. We need to have that across the bottom of our roof so that when my next shingle goes down it will go right over that tar strip and you don't nail down in here the only thing that holds it down is that tar strip so if that's the way it's going to be all the way up the roof we also need to start with that at the bottom of our roof and you'll notice that they have made it so that there is this second layer is right here and there's a seam and on this one here they don't have it quite right that they've got it so that that tar strip is actually above that the ones I'm used to using this tar strip would be back here so you would just cut along here and you would have that tar strip at the bottom huh that's not good so, I'm going to have to cut it along the top of this line here, which means I'm going to have a double layer to cut through there because I need that tar strip on the bottom. Once it gets heated up in the sunshine, it'll stick down to that and it won't blow off. And, uh, I'm finding that we have a fair amount of um, windy weather here, so I want them to stick down good. If worse comes to worse, I could staple them down with real small staples, um, but we're going to try to avoid that. Then the next thing is, now these shingles are, I'm guessing that they are metric. I haven't actually measured them. Three tab shingles are three feet long, and these are not. These. These are 39 and a quarter long. They are a metric shingle. So we want to cut. Um, we want to cut our starters 
so that you stagger them. You don't want your seams lining up going up the roof. So I will cut the way we did it with three tabs because the tw tabs are 12 inches long. You'd cut six inches, then you'd cut it at the tab, and you cut another six, and cut it at the tab. These are 39, and uh, we can do it similar. If, uh, let me see, six goes into 39. We have 39 inches for the sake of rounding it off, divided by six equals six and a half. So that's what our cuts are going to be, six and a half inches. So that means I will cut six and a half inches and the next, and that's off of this one shingle, the next one I'll cut 13, the next one I'll cut, cut 19 and a half, and the last one I'll cut uh, 20, what is that, 25 I guess. So, and those, that should be enough to get me up my roof if you're doing a regular roof on a house, you start with a full tab, then you go to the one that had one piece cut off of it, and then you go to the one that's a neck shorter, and the neck shorter, so you stair step, step it up the roof, and I'll show you when I get up there, um, give you an idea of how it goes. So hold on to your hat. Okay, so I have a set of enders here, or if I can use them for starters if I want, and then on this end I have my set of starters. Okay, so you start with one set, you finish with the other cutoffs, because you're going to cut them to fit on the building. So I guess there's nothing left for us to do but to go up there and start shingling now. Okay. So now we have our starters on. You can see my starter strip with a uh, tar at the bottom and then a full shingle and then step back for my first cutoff and the next and the next and the next and the last and that's called stair stepping. And as high up as I am, it looks like probably once I have run these out to the other end that I will have two more shingles to get up over the peak. So I'm going to work at it. I think I need to cut these branches out of the way. What do you think? Yeah. Hold on to your hat. Well, there we are. One side of the roof is done. And the other side is got the scaffolding moved over there, about ready to go. And some of you might wonder uh, why I have those rafter tails hanging out there like that. You got to remember I'm from New England. And uh, back in the day, before they had aluminum gutters, they would use wood gutters. And of course you have to cap the end of your gutters. And uh, the original gutters, which I'm going to make gutters for here. I thought about putting aluminum gutters on it, but I think I'm going to make some wooden gutters. Uh, they were made so that they just butted up against the rake boards on either end. That was the end cap. And then they would tar around it. Uh, I'm old enough. So that I have actually installed wooden gutters and there are a few places uh, where they still use them, mainly for looks and architectural detail. They do work. They're usually made out of fur, uh, at least the ones I ever installed were, and I did those with my dad. So that was a, a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make mine out of some pine. I'll show you, show them to you when I get to that point. But that's why those rafter tails hang up, so it would cover the end of your gutters. So uh, there's our shingles all done on this side of the roof, and that little tab hanging down there, 
that's to cover the top of your rake board and keep it from having water running on it constantly and uh, generally speaking when you would put wooden gutters on you would line the inside of them um, with tar at least on the ends and sometimes all the way across and it was also common to use lead downspouts um, and I'm not sure if you could still get them or not but lead downspouts you drill a hole through your wooden gutter and uh, put the lead in it and tack it in with clout nails, clow nails little short um, galvanized and uh, yeah I'm going to look around see if I can find some vintage downspouts some old time round ones keep my eye out at the dump maybe I'll find something there what do you think so yeah I'm ready to do the other side but I'm running out of shingles I sure hope they have some of those left because those were out of leftover pile but uh, yeah uh, not only am I running out of shingles I'm running out of steam for today this is hard work for an old guy I'm grateful to be able to do it still ain't as nimble as I used to be that's for sure this would have been all done a couple hours ago and uh, I wouldn't have even bothered to put scaffold them up. I would have just worked off a ladder. But, yeah, concession to old age. Thanks for watching, commenting. Subscribing. And, uh, well, the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye now.